We start with our top story. Mozambique's president-elect Daniel Chapo struck a conciliatory tone yesterday as he spoke after the results of disputed polls were announced, saying he wants to be president for all Mozambicans. He says he wants to engage in dialogue and conversation with the opposition and not through street protests. VOA Portuguese to Africa reporter Amancio Vilanculos is in Maputo monitoring the situation. The peace talks, uh, 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 Amancio, uh, called by the president-elect, does not seem to have resonated with the opposition. What's going on today and what's the state of the country right now? Well, thank you, Yehez. The country is still very tense, like today. Uh, a group of Mozambican uh, Muslims often referred as Indian or Asian or of Indian or Asian origin met into the street, which is unusual. Uh, this community never participates or they don't participate at all, mostly in political activities. But today they met into the street to to to, to protest uh, against the election result, which shows also a support. To, to opposition party here in Mozambique. Um, and we have to remember that people are protesting mostly against the results. Uh, at the time of legal support of the Freedom Party, they question how the party got 7% in the presidential and also legislative elections. And also this uh, demonstration, like I said, are because of the election and uh, also members and supporters of the Podem party are now saying that they, have, they doubt whether the, the, the killing of the two members of their party will ever be uh, properly um, investigated. Opposition, in another point, never had a strong voice in the Mexican parliament, so uh, many people thought that this was the time that opposition can have a stronger voice uh, in parliament. But it comes out that the Limo party got most of the seats, like 78% of the seats in parliament. That's why uh, opposition parties are now saying that elections were rigged. Also, some other members of opposition party are calling for unity among uh, those who are not in the government uh, to fight against the rigging of elections. So do you think, Amancio, these uh, protests, uh, they're becoming like a daily occurrence in Maputo. Uh, you think it will continue? It will likely continue. We have to remember that uh, Venanti Mondjan, uh, the second most voted presidential candidate, he said uh, that because um, Paul Guambi and the Evelyn Diaz they were killed by unknown people, and those people they used 25 bullets. So he said that his supporters, his people, will be marching in the streets, will be protesting for at least 25 days to honor the lives of these uh, young men who were killed last last weekend here in Maputo. And this is already having an impact in in business today. For example, we saw that. Uh, most businesses are closed, uh, even in the very posh areas. In the outskirts, people are struggling because uh, uh, they live in a gig economy, so they need to go to the streets to sell this and that, but now they cannot do that. But at the same time, they say they have the right to protest against this situation. The Congolese are considering a review of the constitution which the opposition fears could be used by the Tshisekedi regime to extend his tenure. President Felix Tshisekedi himself has already waited in, saying the Democratic Republic of Congo needs a worthy constitution. In Kasangani, in the northeast region which he toured this week, the Congolese leader has been telling audiences that he will set up a commission to reflect on and draft a new constitution. He said, I will appoint a national commission next year which will include people from all disciplines who will be Congolese to reflect and give us a constitution that will be adapted to our realities. For him, the current laws do not reflect Congolese nationalism. 
This constitution is not good. It was drafted abroad by foreigners. Our constitution must be best on our way of life. He asserted. The DRC constitution was put in place in 2006 after a referendum. At the time, President Joseph Kabila and the parliamentary majority had called on the Congolese people to vote for it to put an end to the cycle of violence. of violent ascension to power and establish a democracy based on elections. The opposition then led by Etienne Tshekedi, father of the current head of state, called for its rejection. But in 2015, when certain members of the Kabila regime put forward the idea of reforming it, the opposition vigorously opposed it, forcing the president to retreat the opposition leaders, including Felix Tshisekedi, suspected that the president was looking for a way to cling on to power. Now the debate is back and the shoe on the other foot. President Tshisekedi, the President Tshisekedi's UDPS party has openly launched a campaign to reform the constitution. At the beginning of October, Augustine Kabuya, the party's interim chairperson and Tshekedi's right-hand man, asserted that the constitution has demonstrated his limitations in the exercise of public power. It has put evolve to be properly adapted to the political management and the progress of Congolese society. So far, no one at the UDPS has officially spoken of the intention to change the term limit or mandate of elected officials. DLC law allows a president to serve a maximum of two terms. Tshisekedi is on his second term. The president said to change that only the people can decide, not the president.